Yeah, good day YouTubers, Tinker O'Toole again here with another video. Somebody asked me what all the hole cutouts were for on a stool raker gauge. So I'm going to go over each one and show you what it is, but while I've got the camera focused, I'm going to show you the first one. You can see 30 degrees there. Now what that refers to on the top are the angles of the top plate. So the top plate is viewing the cutter from the top and it's the filing angle so when you file uh, a uh, tooth and as you can see where my finger is here I've actually got uh, we'll have a look at that in a minute that's a 25 degree angle here that V shape there and I've got 30 degree ones on there so I've marked the tooth and that tooth is at a 30 degree angle now on the left of that 30 degrees is a 30 degree angle and on the right of that angle is a uh, 10 degree angle which is used for milling so we'll line up the 30 degrees so with the gauge if you have a look it lines up almost look perfect so that's what it's used for to find out whether now still recommend 30 degrees on their chisels and their semi chisel chains. so that's what that does okay we'll zoom back out now, we'll have a look at the rest. Now, at the front, you'll see 0 0.65. So, what that means is if I was to put that over a tooth now, like what it is, and we'll zoom in there, if that raker protruded out of that little gap there, then I'd have to run the file over, the little flat file, and run it over the top. So... What that means is that this gauge will constantly keep, uh, if you file it every time that you check and you run the file over, it will keep at 0.65 of a millimetre below the highest point of the tooth. And we'll show you that in a minute. So that's that part of the gauge. And the other windows, you've got zero degrees. Well, we don't use zero degrees much unless we're measuring a... Uh, uh, a, a milling chain, but I doubt whether most people uh, would have it set at zero. Ten degrees. So, so then we've got thirty-five degrees left and right. So if we have a look at that, there's your thirty-five degrees on the right. There's your thirty-five degrees on the left. Ten degrees on the right. Ten degrees on the left. Ten degrees is used for milling chains. So for those people that are not familiar with milling chains, they have a less angle so that it doesn't jump about and chatter and give a smoother cut. It's slower at 10 degrees, but it gives a much better cut. Then we go to the most common one, which is 30 degrees. So as we just showed you before, you've got 30 degrees uh, on the right and 30 degrees on the left. And this is a, uh, if we measure here, you can see the 30 degrees. So it lines up pretty, pretty good, spot on. Look, if you're out a, a fraction, if you had a fraction, you wouldn't even worry about it. It's not even uh, worth worrying about. So the next thing, and if we just move back and we'll zoom back out, I'll show you that this is what I was talking before. So when I file my chains, I've got 30 degrees, 25, 30 degrees and 25 and 30 again at the end. So when I hold my file like that, as you can see, I, if I'm twisted, so I file with the line and that keeps me in check. So the only other thing that I'd say about this, if you look in and have a look, you'll see it's got quarter inch 38.325 and 38P for Pico chains. So they're the four different type of chains that this gauge will fit. So that's what the top part is. At the very end of the gauge, you can use this part here to clean out your bar. And roughly a bar is about eight millimeters. So you can use this as a ruler to check how deep or if it's getting worn. So that's what that's used for. It's like a little ruler to measure the depth of your bar, the, the gap that's in your bar. Next, if we turn it over, you'll see these uh, cutouts and even I remember when I got my first one, I wasn't even, I saw all those numbers, I thought, what the hell are they for? So the first one here 
is 85 degrees, 75 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, uh, and 80 degrees. Now you could also use, if you wanted to, you could use 60 degrees to check your top plate angle if you had a hexa. So it is to check the side plate. So it will sit over the tooth. And I'm just wondering whether we can actually drop the camera down and show you this. Yeah, it's one thing to explain something to people, but it's another thing to actually show them. And I'd like to show you rather than tell you. So if you look through that window, you can see the edge of the chain. And not so much on this type of chain, but you can see that edge here. So if it, you can see that edge that's there. Now on a square ground, and I'll show you what a square, square ground looks like. And that's where you would use this type of gauge on square ground to check that you've got the right angle. So if we bring this up again, so you can see those numbers. And if you look at this type of tooth here, and if you were to put the gauge over it, you'd be able to see what this angle is on here. So this is what we refer to refer to as square ground chains. So that's just a, a copy of one that I made. And you've got all different angles that you would be using. So that's what it's used for. Uh, typically it's used for full chisel uh, because you can see if you had, if you wanted to check what that angle was here, it's probably close to 90 degrees. So you've got 80, 90, or you've got, you got 90, 85, 80, 75, and 60. So you'd be able to sort of have a bit of a guess. Uh, very, very close to what it is. It's not the, the most uh, accurate type of gauge, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So, yeah. So that's what it's for, all those hole cutouts. It's not a bad little gauge. The only negativity that I have about using these type of gauges is when we spoke before about 0.65 of a millimetre, what that's referring to, that if we look at the highest point here and the highest point there, it is to keep 0.65 of a millimetre uh, the height from here to here. So 0.65 of a millimetre higher than the raker at the, at the highest point of the tooth. As the tooth wears down, it will only ever maintain 0.65 of a millimetre. Now, the person in question that asked a question, because they told me that they had five chainsaws, they've read their manuals and the hole cutouts, uh, the manual doesn't go into any explanation. And even when you buy one of these, you don't get a piece of paper with it. It's almost that still assumed that you know what's going on. And I can tell you right now, when you get new to chainsaws, you won't know what they all mean. So that's quite understandable. So when your chain, oh yeah, the person turned around and said to me that they thought that this gauge could tell you when you were going to reach the end of the life of the chain. Well, that's not true. It can't tell you that. There is a little telltale sign that, Normally when you turn the tooth over and you look on top, so this is the top plate, when you look on top, if you look at the back of the tooth, you normally see a laser etched line on there. That tells you that's the end of the life when you file a tooth and you come down to this line. All the steel chains, uh, most chains have, have that marking on them. So yeah, that's not a problem. Now the only other problem that I have with these gauges, while they work okay when the chain is about half worn when they get worn down beyond that i only ever use a progressive depth gauge now this type of gauge when it's placed over and we'll just sort of show you something there for those people that maybe don't know about this that when this type of gauge is placed over let's just check 
it is sitting on one, two, three, four. So it sits on four teeth. One, two, three, four. If those teeth aren't perfectly level, then this gauge won't sit perfectly level and the raker won't protrude as accurate as what it should. It's pretty good on a brand new chain, but it can deteriorate. Uh, it won't be out by too much, but nonetheless, it can deteriorate. And then you can get an incorrect reading uh, on that gauge. Now, a man by the name of Ray Carlton invented the uh, Philo plate, which was a progressive depth gauge in 19, early 60s. And all the professionals used it, and it wasn't until oh, 2017 or something that still actually came out with this type of uh, progressive depth gauge. It is superior. It works a little bit different. It is hardened to Rockwell 62, so you can run your file over it, because a raker file is only hardened uh, to about 55 Rockwell, something like that there. So when you place, you've got two settings, hard and soft. So when you place it over the top, hard and soft means hard and soft wood, by the way, for those that don't know. So when you place it over like that, and we'll see if we can zoom in, you can see there's the raker there. So, And if the raker protrudes, it's just a matter of placing the file over the top. It's taken a little bit of metal off now. So that's all you do. Move it forwards. Go to the next one. Do the same thing. Uh, it really works good. Whereas this type, you place it on top like that. You run the file over. Same thing. Same thing. This gauge is hardened. Be careful of the cheap Oregon type ones because they're not hardened and you can't run the file over. But these are hardened to 62 uh, Rockwell. And uh, you can run the file over them. So, just to briefly recap, all these cutouts on top are to do with the top plate, and all the ones on the side are to do with the side plate of the tooth. Most people won't use these unless they've got square ground and they want to check that, but most people can use this, and as I've mentioned before and I showed you, that you can put it on top and view from the top and make sure that you're filing consistently. I use this here, and as I've shown you, if you hold your file correctly, so if we were going to file this file, I would move it in the right position, and I could tell by that line that I'm in the right position, and I could continue filing with, like this. Because if you don't have something to guide you, eventually you'll file crooked, unless you're an absolute expert. And not everybody's that gifted. Anyway, I hope that uh, helps uh, some of the beginners out there or other people that may have brought chainsaws and not familiar with all the side cutouts and what they mean. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Bye for now.